Welcome to Get the Net, a fishing podcast that takes a deep dive into competitive events, fishing news, tips, tactics, and most importantly, interviews with some of the most interesting and in-tuned anglers from Canada to the central U.S. We're leaving no stone unturned to bring you the most raw and authentic talk talk. My name is Jamie Bruce, and while my resume says bass, my frying pan says walleye, I'm no stranger to the multi-species realm. Whether you're puttering on tackle, driving the bus, cutting the grass, or killing time in a 9 to 5, I'll try to give you something in every episode to take with you on the water, or at the very least, bring you a few laughs. Okay, welcome back everyone to Get the Net. We're on round 6. Not sure what day this one's coming out. Uh, I know they've been kind of sporadic, but it's a busy season for derbies and, you know, working and industry stuff and, um, you know. From my standpoint, fishing comes before media. I've had a fishing rod a lot longer than I've had a GoPro and a microphone. So, you know, and without fishing, there's nothing to talk about. But anyway, this will kind of come out when it comes out. We'll stabilize the release schedule at some point here. But hey, big show tonight. We've got the reigning Bassmaster Elite Series Angler of the Year, Seth Fighter, coming on. Well, I never expected to be interviewing Fighter on this show. Uh, we had Gussie last week and we had Joe Cooper the week before. So... I mean, the beauties just keep snowballing. A month or two ago when we kicked this podcast off, I uh, didn't expect the, you know, the reception it's got and the positive feedback. So the People's Champ fighters just in the powder room right now, got them on the back burner while we talk local stuff. Since the last podcast, I think there's only been one kind of derby of significance. It's the Dryden Walleye Masters back after a couple of years of COVID. And, you know, this is a big field. It's 135 boat cap. And one of the biggest walleye tournaments in North America, it's on the Wabagoon chain. Uh, you know, pretty dynamic fishery, really healthy and a sweet place to be. It's got a real good payout, lots of good anglers show up there. So it's one of them tournaments. I, uh, I used to fish it a lot with my buddy, John, uh, from Dryden and, uh, stopped five or six years ago, just summer got a little bit busy, but because of, uh, you know, the flooding and everything, I can't even get to my cabin to do any work out there so i just said screw it i'll uh huck my entry fee in and go try the first place a boat so go try to win a boat kind of familiar with the chain we went last year and won a bass derby there it was a good little bass derby um but yeah i haven't walleye fished there in five or six years like i said so i ended up taking a day off work to go i figured i better go at least like accompany myself with the pond a little bit um which is a tough decision like a lot of people think I have endless amounts of, of time to fish, but the reality is I work Monday to Friday like everyone else. And, you know, I get a handful of weeks off a year. I'm trying to save as many of those as I can for the Bassmaster Opens next year. So the reality is, I mean, local tournaments are limited to evening fishing or just no pre-fish for me. So, um, you know, one of those things I've been around long enough that can kind of wheel around and, you know, hopefully not embarrass myself too bad. But yeah, that's that's a deal there. But I ended up taking a, a day off. I figured it was worth it just because, you know, it's a big tournament. I don't want to look like an idiot and I wouldn't mind winning some, you know, some money or a boat. So went there, checked her out. It was all right. Didn't have a partner. Um, kind of ran through a couple of my Dryden buddies that didn't happen. I was, you know, just last minute sign up. So I grabbed a uh, a buddy, Colin Barton, who I've actually never met before. Um, I know him through a few mutual friends, and I know he likes catching big walleye, and he's a, he's an enthusiast. He lives in Dryden, but he doesn't fish the Wabagoon. So he jumped in, and we ended up having a pretty good weekend. The first day of the tournament was just pretty much a, a pre-fish day, uh, scratched together. Um, we had one big one, like a six or seven pounder, and then one that was just a line burner. They got to be 23 inches or over to keep there. And uh, this thing was like, you could get it to touch, but it was as close as it could possibly get. So we stuck it in the live wall, had it all day. Didn't think we were going to have to wait in. End of the day, you know, didn't didn't catch any more over. So had to, had to do it. Um, it was just one of those decisions you have to make. I mean, we were the last boat in out of 120 uh we're bringing in a line burner fish like i mean that's the thing you got to push it if you want to compete in these tournaments especially if you don't have time to you know to get out there and pre-fish for three or four days or whatever you need so had to had to use every minute that the derby gave us and had to use every millimeter that the bump board gave us so we survived to the second day uh 
crept out there and uh ended up having a real good day caught uh we caught four seven pounders that day and some really nice um really nice ones under 18 to keep so we brought them in we had just under 18 and slid up from 15th to 5th which is solid coin there it's a good payout had a good time with uh my buddy Colin, lots of laughs and uh and yeah it was a good weekend so congrats to scott abraham frank lombardo jed and richard duje mike cote and natalie cote uh guy fishing with his daughter fan of the show he he approached me seems like a beauty that caught a bunch of walleyes uh good job and Corey grenier harry sawchuck uh took fourth and yeah we're down in fifth i said on the last show that i usually don't shout out fourth place but because i'm in fifth i guess we're going all the way to fifth so kind of tripping on my words here a little bit but also uh shout out to uh danny herbeck and brendan church they broke the tournament record 21 and a half pounds magnum walleyes uh brought in shore lunch the next day they had like five five something pounds and Still uh, still made the top 10, so congrats on that day, fellas, and on busting your own record. And huge thanks to uh, everyone that, you know, puts on that tournament. It's a spectacle. There's a big tent ride, um, you know, full full media coverage. It's, it's, a, it's a frickin' derby. Um, you know, if you're thinking about walleye fishing, that's a good one to go to. Uh, if you're in the area, want to volunteer or anything like that, it, uh, it's a pretty fun event. There's a good... Uh, good atmosphere lots of good people there and i hope to uh hope to go back next year i think that was about it for the local derby front uh, a couple tournaments coming up uh our bass season opens july 1st so the shoal lake bass tournament is uh is the first weekend here and then the Kenora walleye opens back so that's the second weekend in july i'm gonna fish that one as well i don't know when this happened but somehow i turned into a walleye fisherman this year i fished the kwo and the, and the walleye masters before but we're going from the women's walleye tournament to the Wabagoon walleye masters to the Kenora walleye open. That's a lot of damn sharp gill plates. That's a lot of live bait maintenance. Um, you know, we, the good thing is we have been catching a lot of fish on uh, Z-Man hula stick and the three inch Z-Man minnows. I mean, those are just staples. I'll never not have those in the boat for, for walleye fishing and, you know, putting them on BT fishing smeltinator jig heads. And the quarter ounce crusher jig is the best walleye one for, uh, for that hula stick. And, you know, as always, uh, btfishing.com, use promo code, get the net, you know, show us you're a fan of the show, save a few bucks, all good. We'll, uh, we'll ship it fast. U S and Canada, good stock, of lots of stuff, hair jigs, smeltinators, under spins, clean jigs for large mouth and, you know, shallow small mouth fishing and, and have to give a shout out to Canbat batteries. Um, Believe it or not, they, uh, you know, they were kind of part of our, our moderate success on the weekend. Um, like I said, I didn't have a bunch of time to pre-fish, so I didn't have like a bunch of sweet spots dialed in. So, I mean, that trolling motor, I got that new Garmin Force, that sucker was on 10 a bunch. It goes like five miles an hour. And, uh, I was just roosting from spot to spot to spot to spot, just kind of, you know, scouting around, looking. My partner looked back. He's like, it's like you got a nine, nine on the bow of that thing. Um, so <laughs> it was, it was cool. Uh, just blasting around and no way you're doing that without lithium batteries. Like I would have stroked lead batteries in a, in a freaking hurry doing that. So I haven't, uh, I haven't killed that force yet. And I've been, I've been stepping on it. Uh, like I said before, I'm a, I'm a nickel squeezer. I don't like to spend a bunch of money on gas if I don't have to. And, uh, you know, it's nice to just go fishing for free in the evening. So can bat lithiums, I run 300 amp hours in in my rig. That's, you know, on the, on the high side, you can get away with a little bit less, uh, can bat.com use promo code Bruce five checkout, save you a few bucks, get you some free shipping and, uh, get some batteries. But anyway, we've got the reigning angler of the year in the lobby here. So he better bring his ass in. Hopefully he didn't want to talk about walleyes, but I think we're pretty safe on that one. What's up, bud? What's up, Brucey? Thought I was getting stood up there for a sec. No, no. My, uh, I don't know. My computer's moving really slow. Took like 10 minutes to open my email. Yeah, man. But we're here. Yeah. Well, good to have you on. I uh, never thought when I cranked this thing up that the sixth episode would be with uh, the reigning Bass Elite AOI. So we'll probably just shut this bitch down right after this one. Cause yeah. Yeah. Well, no, we got to get Matt Robertson on here still. 
There you go. We got the trifecta. I seen Gus. He was on here. I got jealous. Yeah, I want, yeah. I wanted to be on the Brucey show. Yeah. Well, we'll make sure to get Robertson on here while the show doesn't have any sponsors because I'll for sure lose him once he's on. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, bud. Well, what's happening, man? Might have hopped in a Tonka Derby this week or what? Yeah, official Wednesday night or last night with Chowder. We got whooped up by some little kids. We had like, it's four officially. I mean, we had 12 pounds, got a little check. And a couple of kids brought in like 16. Beat yeah. the hell out of us. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to feel pretty good. For them, yeah, I'm sure it does. Yeah, sure I wasn't just talking, talking all people. kinds of shit. I'm sure they're talking all kinds of shit about me right now. <laughs> I wonder if I know him. I uh, I drew a co angler from Tonka down in Tennessee there, and and he said he uh, big dogging around there pretty good. He, oh, yeah? uh, I, think, I think he travels with Chad Smith. I can't remember his name. He's a good kid, but okay. Yeah, it might have been one of Chad's buddies. He looked like it. Yeah, yeah. He he showed up. He had like ten NRXs, threw them all in the boat. I was like, oh sweet. And then yeah. uh, and then this girl came walking up, and she had another ten NRXs. I was like, oh cool. This girl's fishing the tournament, and then she just jumped in my boat and laid down ten more NRXs <laughs> beside him. <laughs> so there's it all like covered, a, huh? Oh, yeah, man. There's a pile of them. I went down to land one. I was rolling around in them like a freaking panda bear and a bunch of bamboo sticks. <laughs> Just looking at the sky like, sorry, man. Like, I got to get this thing. <laughs> Just snapping shit. Oh, yeah. How's Leitner doing? Good. I fished with him last night. We called yeah. him Shelter. That might get confusing. Yeah. Uh, oh, he's doing good. He's getting all jacked up, ready to get out to Oneida and pound on some smallies. Yeah, he loves it, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's doing good this year. Yeah, yeah. He's easy to be around. I oh, yeah. spent, spent a little bit of time around him, and I just pretty much just sat back and laughed the whole time. Oh, yeah. He comes up with some pretty good shit. Yeah, and I mean, he's like into his 40s and just is like the ultimate, like loves it still. You oh, know, yeah. no, no yeah. problem sleeping on a couch 20 hours from home, like. Just lives it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, man, that's deadly. Um, you know, this is this is the first time I'm I'm kind of going face to face with you. Uh, Gussie mentioned you you might have been looking to come up to my surf and turf derby in the in the fall one year, so I figured I'd see you there. But uh, yeah, that sounds yeah, fun. That yeah, it hasn't happened yet. He mentioned that yeah. you were going to come, and he said you were asking what day it was, and I said we'll have it in June if if fighters coming up for it. So. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta shoot some grouse though too well that's that's part that's, of the deal right yeah big grouse and big walleye or something yeah yeah yep. you know how to catch walleyes mm. i was just talking about them. no 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 not really i catch a few on accident just bass fishing but i don't really ever fish for them i seen you what'd you fish a walleye tournament last week yeah yeah there's yeah, some dandies yeah yeah it was good fishing it's kind of yeah. hard to stuff them in the live well <laughs> yeah 30 inches uh yeah like 28 yeah it was pretty but, nice yeah well shit man you grew up right in kind of walleye central you're like the black sheep around there bass fishing oh yeah i, I, I kind of miss it now like growing up like every boat you drive by on the street was a wand or a walleye boat and that's all anyone fished for and they made fun of you for fishing bass and you go to any of our lakes and just hammer them because nobody messed with them and now like Every boat you see on the road's a bass boat. Every lake we got's just getting throttled. Yeah, they're on it now. No, oh, yeah, yeah. You think you've had a little bit of influence on that? Kind of make ba- making nah. bass fishing cool. No, I think that's just that was common regardless. Yeah, I think I just happened to be here. So what would you end up in Tonka? I think we got fourth with the. Uh, 12 something for four chickens are they out on that program yet i they might have been i didn't like i kind of missed i like yesterday was the only day i practiced was just seeing fish before the tournament you know so i went out and checked some stuff and wasn't really feeling like the main lake stuff yet but after seeing those fish those kids caught i think they're probably pulled out there because they had a big tournament there monday my buddies fished and they weren't getting anything doing that but this time of year it happens quick you know a few few hot days and it goes from shitty post bond uh out on the rock pile snapping you know yeah 
yeah, we're a little bit behind that here. It's just yeah. kind of yeah, like, it's just happening here. We're nice. what six hours south of you. Uh, yeah, yeah, Something right like around that. there. Yeah. Did you get all that shitty cotton on the water? It's it's tailing off right now. It was pretty bad for a while. Yeah, that was, was the worst I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. two two casts, and then your third one just backlash. Put the rod down. Do yeah. it again. Like, oh, yeah. No, <laughs> can't even reel your shit in because your guide's plug. Yeah, yeah. If someone would have drove by while I was casting, they would have been like, "That guy is a f- poser <laughs> <laughs> out there in a tw- you know in a twenty foot." Bass rig all jacked up and getting a backlash every cast. Yeah. <laughs> real he oh, when it goes twenty feet. Yeah. 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 How's the mosquitoes uh, up there? They gotta be brutal. Oh yeah, bud. They're thick as ever. I'm so uh, freaking soft too. Like <laughs> if I get bit a few <laughs> times and just like throwing a shit fit, just look like a giraffe with a mouse around its ankles. Like uh, you just gotta it, bang darts the whole time. If you chain smoke. They at least like stay away from your face, anyways. Oh, that's a good call. I don't have yeah. really any buddies that smoke. I've got a couple buddies with some like shitty old two stroke motors that you yeah, know just stand those behind that. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Like an old Yamaha that's drinking like 20 to 1. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gas lines like garden hoses just sounds like it's gonna die on every stroke. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Old Johnson. Smoking. Who? An old Johnson. Oh, I thought you Those said like one of the Johnstons. Dude. Oh no, they don't smoke. They're no, pussies. I mean their motors back in their E-Tech days probably did though. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, sweet to have you on the on the cast. Um oh, yeah. What is the show mean, called? Get the net. Get the net? Nice. Yeah. So I figured it was you? called like I figured I was thinking it was more like Brucey's bass and bullshit or something. Oh, yeah, I like that, that works good. Yeah. I like that. I Gussie sent me a screenshot of your text to him. It was like, how do I get on the Brucey show? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I like that too. Yeah, I had to call him there. after. I was like, is this a joke? And yeah, he didn't say nothing. So no. Um real deal. Yeah, bud. Well, cool. There's a bunch of people up here that, you know, well, obviously the whole damn world knows who you are now, but a, a few years ago you kind of really, you know. <sighs> You made bass fishing cool again, bud. Like I was for a bit there, I was embarrassed to, you know, I was embarrassed to look up to it, it kind of in the direction that that tournaments were going and and the direction where anglers were going. Like, I mean, when you show someone a pro bass angler and they got a freaking tournament jersey tucked into their track pants and are staring at a screen and like, you know, rocking around with their dad's credit card and and just it, it's just not that cool. Yeah. Um, but you know, I think it was at St. Clair, you won that AOI Derby. Um, and that, you know, Gussie was in that tournament. So lots of people from Canada were watching a whole bunch of people already knew who you were already, but in that one, after you won it, I think he said something like a Mercer was like, what are you doing next? And you're like, I'm going to go shoot some green heads and knock up my wife or make a baby or whatever, whatever you said, <laughs> it was just freaking funny. And I got like three calls after and they were, you know, they all had the same message. And one was from my buddy Kelly. And he just called and he's like, who's that guy with the hair? He's a beauty. And, you know, <laughs> this guy doesn't, this guy doesn't bass fish. Like he doesn't, you know, he doesn't care about fishing. He was just watching because Gus, he was on and passing. And, and, oh. you know, that's kind of the, the thing. Everyone watches Gussie up here and it's awesome. And he's done a lot for it up here. And, and now we've kind of seen you and, and, you know, we've seen a shift after that where, Bass fishing's pretty freaking cool again, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. We got Maddie Robertson too. He's making it cool too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's a he's a beauty. He makes it like the reality is it's it's like it's not that fun to watch a lot of the time, especially like oh, with all yeah. the offshore stuff now. So, I mean, if you don't have a couple characters in there, and and you know what what makes it better is is kind of the characters of the guy that's that are mashing them they're catching them best more more often than not so you know and then mix in zona and it's just freaking entertainment oh yeah oh yeah i like i even like watching it you know after we get cut and stuff zone is freaking hilarious he's got some good zippers in there most of yeah. them kind of fly under the radar but if you know them it's pretty hilarious yeah yeah and i mean it's just 
like it's it's a big thing to say that you guys are you know kind of shape the sport but it, you know it, it really is what happened and uh when the when the big split hit a few years ago uh you know it's it's no accident that bass stayed the the fun one the one everyone likes um yeah. you know it's uh it's just it's a lot more authentic and just you know a lot more genuine and and you know that's that's got to be why people like you so much like you're the people's champ you know yeah. you're not you're not out there and i know you've alluded it to it before like in your first couple of years you're i don't know probably wearing a freaking visor and gel in your hair and yes sir no <laughs> sir <laughs> <laughs> not quite but pretty much yeah 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 i mean that was when bass fishermen were supposed to look like a damn tennis pro yeah yeah so I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, got, yeah i'm not get some nice hair yeah he does he does and i'm not you know i'm not digging at that that's just, that's kind of the old you know the old yeah. school and uh it's just sweet now because the more you know the more people like you and matt and zona and gussie mm-hmm. and uh, one of the Johnstons and the more <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, they're both Canadian, Canadian legends. Um, but just, you know, it's nice to see like that more authentic side where you can just be yourself a little bit more instead of like, cause people don't really uh, freaking care if you're using eight pound or 10 pound or like, no, yeah. 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 I get it. Got any thoughts yeah. on that? No, I think I think the split was a good thing, man. It was a uh, got a lot of them old crabby dudes out of there and made room for a bunch of new guys and yeah, like you said, more authentic and fun to watch and versus your sponsor machines, you know, that just hammer you with everything they're sponsored by. It's just kind of annoying. Yeah. Yeah. People aren't stupid anymore. Like yeah. not I shouldn't say anymore, but Back in the day, I, consumers were a lot more impressionable than they are now. Yeah. yeah. Like whatever you saw on TV, that was the deal. And now that you see Bass Live, it's like, no, that jerk bait he caught him on is a mega bass. It's not the one he told you it was, you know? Yeah. And but, every vibrating jig is a jackhammer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, from a, from a sponsor standpoint, it's, you know, it's, seems like they they're going to be like better off with with someone like you who's cracking the hell out of them and and just is you know a lot more honest about what's going on and i'm sure you're a lot more honest with them too like you're probably not blowing smoke up their ass on every product they have i know uh you know i know there's some a new lineup coming out of d in the next little bit and i I got a quick peek at them and they're freaking yeah they're deadly and and that you know, with, without kind of influence from you and a few other people, I'm sure s- s- like a sponsor machine would have just looked at the the old black knuckles and been like, "Yeah, these are good. These are great. I love yeah. them." Favorite hooks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly. There's most people are like that. Like I just had one sponsor. I kind of know whatever. Anyways, the product they made like wasn't really as good as everyone said it would be, and they said I was like the only one complaining about it. And then, like, I talk to the other guys, and they're like, no, I don't like it either. But it's like they don't tell them that. You know what I mean? They're just like, yes, man. Like, oh, yeah, it's great. Everything's great. I'm like, well, if you don't tell them it's jacked up, how are they going to know, you know? Yeah, man. And that's, I mean, you hear it all the time, too. Like, um, pro anglers bitching that the the first place prize has been a hundred grand for 25 years. Well, they, you know, they've been taking it for 25 years. Oh, yeah. You know, just yeah. not not a whole lot of pit pushback and a lot of yes man and going on, which is you know I get I get that and I get the game and that's fine, but it's uh you know it's good to see it shifting and it's it's shifted for the good. Oh yeah, the payout's getting a bit better. Definitely like through the top ten and stuff you now, like it's pretty solid money all the way through. It's still hundred grand for first, but yeah, you know, yeah, it's a lot more stout. I ain't mad about that. Yeah, no, no, but it used, it used to drop like second was like. 25 or 20 and now it's i think it's almost 50 for second yeah it's that stout eh yeah maybe 40 i don't think it's quite 50 but yeah it's definitely like in the 30s for the top few yeah it's paying good and it you yeah. know can make a living off it and pays pretty sponsors deep you can yeah 
yeah otherwise you're screwed with like yeah. i don't know gas is like nine bucks a gallon here like oh, not yeah. even exaggeration no i know it's, I bet. You know, it's going wild there too but yeah no we're like 550 for diesel now and yeah it's like farming dude like it looks good on the outside but like if you really do the math you're like without sponsors you can't really make that much money like fishing the elite series dude you got i'd say probably like 70 grand into the season and if you cash like bare minimum check nine out of nine tournaments which is like about impossible to do yeah. you made 20 grand yeah you drove all across the country for nine months and busted your ass and made 20 grand like, as long as nothing breaks as long as yeah. you don't break your truck and yeah exactly so i mean without sponsors you can't really do it unless you like win a tournament every year but that's yeah, not that possible yeah yeah but i mean yeah i mean i don't think anyone does it to to make a mint and oh no it's obviously no. not i mean if you can if yeah. you can do it and i mean you're you're pretty much locked in now i'd say like you're you're looking at the long haul with this deal i'd imagine so um pretty pretty sweet way to make a living i know how much oh, of a yeah oh i yeah. bitch about it all the time but yeah there's nothing i'd rather do i mean yeah you know, i jump up on wednesday night and i take that shit dead ass serious i mean i have fun but like don't think i ain't trying to beat the hell out of those two 16 year old kids next week that took my lunch money <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's you can't just really flip the switch off eh? no it's a, every tournament's the same to me man people talk about oh the classic's different and this is different like no wednesday night or bassmaster classic it's i mean the weigh-in's a little different obviously we're not standing in the boat ramp parking lot drinking beers yeah weighing fish in a basket but i mean it's the same i fish the same you know what i mean <laughs> yeah yeah, you're not gonna go show up to a smaller tournament and like cast less or yeah. drive yeah. slower or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, hey man, I saw I saw a Sims commercial the other day and it was badass. It was uh, you were in it and you were talking about c- coming up is the best part. I think is the line you used. Yeah, and uh, you know I thought that was pretty sweet. And you know I've, I've followed your career and and have seen you you know post opens once you're started in the elites and you know we kind of followed you your career there um what it looked like before that what was i doing yeah like what were you just like fishing local derbies and hopping around like during the opens or when you went to the opens did you just go like both feet in or uh no well i i've kind of had a couple stints of this now like um i always fish team derbies and stuff around the house and it's like 2008, like I was just on an absolute heater, like freaking want everything. Yeah. Like it was kind of like last year, like couldn't do anything wrong, dude. Like, right. Like I'd have a little loop in my bait caster, I'd throw it over my shoulder out the other side of the boat and catch a four pounder. Like shit happened, like real life. Like you can't yeah. do anything wrong. So, anyways, I was like 23 or something like that. I was all cocky and thought <laughs> I was going to be like the next Kevin Van Dam. And I went down and fished a couple FLWs down south and just got absolutely destroyed fished one on okeechobee i finished like 195th or something like that fish another one bombed out of that again so i came home like tail tucked between my legs so i knew like fishing up around the house is a lot different than fishing down south so yeah i just fished local tournaments again for a while just working trying to live i'm like i was a bass bum dude i just i lived on my i don't know if you ever met figgy i lived in his basement and like just work just enough to go fishing you know what i mean and uh and i got on another good little heater there in like i don't know 2012 or something like that yeah uh one of the old timers talked me into giving another crack so i fished the first year i did the opens i did the central opens just because i knew like i figured if we went up north i'd do all right like if i fished the northerns i'd do decent but i knew if i was ever gonna make anything of it i was gonna have to catch bass somewhere outside of new york or minnesota and uh so I signed up for the Central Opens, and I had pretty decent. I didn't make the elites, but I had a decent enough year, if, like top ten in the points, and like felt yep. good about like I can compete with these guys and whatever. So the next year after that, I think I fished. I think I did the Southerns and the Northerns. Kind of bombed out in the Southerns 
almost made it through the Northerns. I think I got another top 10 in the points. And yep. then uh, the last year I fished the Opens, I think I did just – I think I just did the Northerns the last year and I made it in. And then, uh, yeah, the first couple of years on the Elite sucked and then kind of got the ball rolling. But, yeah, that, that's probably like – Looking back in my life, that's probably like my favorite time, like fishing the opens and then like the first couple shitty years on the elites. I know that sounds ridiculous. Like everybody probably thinks like last year was like the best year of my life. And it like that was like my favorite time period because it was just like straight grinding. Like no one expects you to do good. Everyone expects you to fail and you're like proving them wrong. And now it's like to the point where everybody expects you to catch them and then it, like you don't. And it's just like real disappointing. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got you. And I, you know, I'm sure those couple like grindy ass years, um, you know, you're probably freaking about money and, uh, you know, worried about the next check and everything and and where you're going to stay and um, all that. But I feel like that might add like a level of resilience to, you know, to guys that have to like grind their way up, you know, Uh as opposed to, to the guy that shows up in a, in a, $300,000 $300,000 motor home, you know, for three yeah. weeks before the tournament with an unlimited budget kind of thing. Yeah. You know, I feel like if something, you know, if they make it and something kind of goes wrong or they meet a little adversity, then they're just not going to have like that resiliency and that, yeah. that level of grind that like, you know, like John Cox, the, the first time I saw him, I was down on uh, Sam Rayburn with Gussie. Mercury was his only sponsor at the time. It was like one of those tour opens. It would have been like 2012 or 2013 or something. And he was driving around. His boat was like, it had a brand new Mercury on it because he was the only sponsor. And this thing was just like spider cracked everywhere, like windshield ripped off, holes punched through it. Like pretty much if you open the rod locker, you'd expect a freaking family of raccoons to be crawling out of it. Was that that old piece of shit Triton with the seats tore out of it? Yeah. The thumbs right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it looked like a yeah. freaking badger attacked his feet. Uh, and, uh, you know, he was just like hard on the grind. And I, you hear kind of his stories where it was like all, you know, around that time, it was almost, almost had to quit. And then, you know, one, uh, I think he won Red River or something like that. And then just like yeah. right back, right back at it. And now he's freaking unstoppable. So you're not uh, going to, you're not going to throw a wrench in his plans. He's already seen the, uh, yeah. he's already yeah. seen the freaking grind. Nothing phases him at all. No, yeah, I think I think that's good. Like we're like a dying breed, from what I'm seeing. Like the working man, like doing his deal and fishing and coming up. It's like every like dude, half the new kids they they've never had a job. I know, man. Like they fished high school, they fished college, and then like straight into the opens and qualify, and like they've never yeah. had a, all they've ever done is fish. And, yeah, like, what is money to them? Like they don't what. Yeah, I, and, mom and, and don't and mom get me and dad's wrong. credit card they got it. And yeah, I do the same thing. I'm not hating. Oh on yeah, them. yeah. But I'm just saying, like we're a dying breed. Like that's the future. That's what's coming. Like them kids are good. They haven't like it's not like they had to work 40 hours and snuck out for a couple hours each night. Like they're fishing every day, like all day. Like that's yeah, how you get good at fishing. Like someone asked me uh, once, if, they were like, "Oh, did you know? Did you come up call through like the college fishing ranks in Canada?" I was like, dude, when I was in college, I got shot at in the north end of Winnipeg and the shittiest security job <laughs> there's ever been. Like, no, I didn't come up through college fishing. Like, I had a freaking tin boat, an Optima blue top battery, and a 45-pound Minn Kota, and I'd bring it down to, like, this little lake and, you know, go flip for largemouth with a telescopic rod, and this was not that long ago. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i mean it, it's painful to watch but it's just so much sweeter when you know it's i mean i don't know but it's got to feel good to like to be able to best that and you, you know you're up against the uh you're up against every resource that they can throw at it and and still topping it yeah well you'll you know, be like there that. soon you gonna do all the opens one of these years man i can't even get in yeah that sucks about yeah. this year Show up to one, get second place, and didn't fish the first one? Uh, I, yeah, I, I signed up for the first one, and there was, like, a hold on my Canadian credit card. My credit card company was all proud. Like, I was sitting there hitting refresh, and 
got it through and my car- card company called me like half an hour later they're like oh there's a three thousand dollar charge from alabama like we stopped the fraud i was like you ruined my life <laughs> <laughs> so i slid down to like 38th on the waiting list oh, and then no. whatever it uh it fizzled before cherokee so yeah i went there got third and then i don't know how it works but i'm back on the waiting list again for hartwell but so oh, you'll probably- get in after the first if the first one's the hardest one to get into you know yeah, so everybody's all amped up. They go there. They go wherever the first one was. They go there and throw up 195th, and they're like, "I'm down." Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I mean, that's kind of the plan. Maybe hopping some of those, and you know, just kind of like you said, it's it's big coin, and it's uh it's a rich man's game. But you know, the play is to win as much as you can yeah. locally, and then you're just kind of playing with house money. And I'm sure you did a similar thing, and yeah. you know put her up and vaporize it and if it works out it works out if not uh hopefully a bunch of beauties keep rolling through the podcast here so i can stay in the industry (laughs) (laughs) there you go this is the backup plan yeah but like you said it's uh it's might be a dying breed but you know that being said and i was thinking about this earlier um you know everyone's talking about forward facing sonar and this and that and these a lot of these guys that are coming up that's all they know you know yeah. they don't like a lot of them are so young they like probably haven't you know haven't had to like triangulate on the bank or, yeah. or yeah. you know or real dialed at it so it, do you think it's going to swing back around to where they're just going to be totally shit kicked out there and it's just going to be like mayhem on the bank uh yeah i mean i've seen that last i mean i can't speak much for this year because i'm sucking but dude, last year everybody was running in i caught every fish in like eight foot of water or less like all year long like didn't need graphs just give me my map and like that was it um this year i've kind of been trying the same program but ain't been working as well still working for johnny cox so yeah i, I mean I, there's always going to be fish on the bank and i think they're they're more catchable um, just because they're, you know, singles and whatever, just mm-hmm. loners, and you can make them react. And the fish that sit in big schools offshore, like, you know, you might catch one or something, and they get kind of jacked up. And, I mean, you can see it on the Tennessee River tournaments, you know. You used to be able to just drag a worm through them and catch every one of them. Now you got to, like, yeah. put a spoon with 18 hooks on it just snag the fish in the belly because they ain't going to bite, you know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> they ain't biting. Just hit them in the side and wrench them in the boat. Like I don't know. It's uh, yeah. Our schedule is pretty. Fight. Yeah, our schedule is pretty spring heavy. You know, um, so there's always gonna be a good yeah. shallow bite. But uh, and then, but there's also time and places like you can go to like a a Lake Lanier or like a place like that, and like I don't care how beat up they are. I mean, forward facing sonar is gonna dominate something like that. But, you yeah. know, you're talking about suspended main lake fish that are just roaming like you're just like i can't after seeing that stuff i don't even know how we caught them before that after seeing around oh. how much them fish swim around you know what i mean yeah i say that every day like every fish yeah like it was a miracle we caught them before that like you just pull up to the point and fire out there and catch them and now like you can watch them it's like oh they're on this side okay now they're here now they're there it's like we gotta get yeah. so lucky just to get a bait in front of them before <sighs> Yeah, I guess. Um, when you first started, though, you were like, you kind of had the title, you know, kind of had the handle of like a a kind of a deep water smallmouth guy, hey? Uh, just because that's like my first bit of success was on that. But Yeah, you caught him on the Mississippi Carolina yeah. rig, and I think in a day. Yeah, that was a shallow deal, and then that Malax tournament, I cracked him there, and that's kind of where everybody got that impression, but... Yeah. Honestly, like I'm a I'm a milfoil flipper and dock skipper. Like that's just what like where I live, that's what you do, you know. When you get up like your area or northern Minnesota, it's more like reeds and pads and cut bank and yeah, stuff like that. But southern Minnesota, I mean it's like grass flipping and boat docking and like you just tie on a jig and just throw it at, like you don't need a depth finder or anything. You just put a pair of sunglasses on, get on the trolling motor and flip a jig at everything you see, you know. Like, that's how I grew up fishing. Yeah, that sounds pretty damn good. I spent a lot of time on Lax, so I knew that place better than that. Like, anywhere else we go for smallmouth, like, I'd rather look at them. 
not spawners, but like, yeah, I'd rather go throw a fly at them or whatever, like go sight fish cruisers. And then like St. Lawrence river, I'd much rather do that than get in the middle of the river and drift a drop shot down the channel. Like that's like walleye fishing to me. Yeah. That's why Gossie loves the river so much. Yeah. Oh yeah. He likes doing that. He's a big drift guy. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. I mean, drifting's kind of an art too in that big. Oh, curve. and it is. Yeah. No, there's definitely a, a skill to it. Yeah. Just, I'd rather get up on them flats and chase them around, pick them out. Like, even when you yeah. drift, you just don't know what you're going to catch. You know what I mean? Yeah. I remember when Spotlock came out, I was all pissed because I was like, ah, oh. like, you know, spend all this time learning like proper boat control. Uh, oh, yeah. You kind of have that muscle memory for not falling off the damn boat, uh, you know, and, and just a bunch of skills that people didn't have. People don't need to have anymore. Oh. Um, and I feel like that river, like hearing about the current is kind of the equalizer on that front. Like, I guess if you hit spot yeah. lock there, you're just still going to yard sail right down the freaking pipe. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely a talent there. And that's kind of the same thing on like my ex and stuff, like before spot lock guys would get on like some of that offshore shit and, like you know, they couldn't hold on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It took a it took a man to stand there in three footers, taking them over the bow the whole yeah. time, and hold on that little spot where that boulder is. You know what I mean? Like you can't yeah. do that. Now they just roll right up there, drop drop their trolling motor in, boop, and they're there all day. Like yeah, like somebody was in that area before. It's like oh whatever, they'll be a hundred yards away here in about five minutes. You know what I mean? You just pull yeah. right in there and crack them, and now they just drop the trailer, hit a button, and they're just there till dark. Yeah, and, it, like, <laughs> being able to stand out there was always, like, the ultimate flex. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, waves crashing over, like, deep, wide stance, just flexing on them. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, spot lock kind of wrecked that, but whatever. Yeah. When it got yeah. real, real wild out there around here, those, like, those tiller boats would just kick the shit out of us. Yeah. Like, I'd big there. And- yeah. Yeah, just full control, like big yeah. wave whackers holding it in, and yeah. such a weird thing competing against back trolling. Yeah, back trolling in two hundreds yeah. <laughs> in bass tournaments. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, some of the boys looked. You, you're not allowed to on the elites. Like you're not What's allowed that to back troll. Yeah, I don't think you're allowed to use it anywhere in the U.S. Like I, I know in Sturgeon Bay, you're not allowed to. Uh, you're not allowed to like fish with your big motor. I don't think can oh, any of those okay. states can you get away with that? Or is it just no go? I mean if you're fishing on Wednesday night, or I think you can. <laughs> right. There's none of that around you? No big back trollers? No, nah, not on Tonka. It's pretty. The only waves you gotta worry about there are from the freaking wake surf boats. Yeah, is it full they're, breach? On, oh, on they're the party worst. season now. They're the worst. Yeah, it don't matter. They're out there at six in the morning. Like they don't care. I used to hate like jet skiers and wakeboarders, and then they started yeah. wake surfing. And like, I, yeah, I don't care about jet skiers or like regular wakeboarders anymore. It's like the wake surfers are the worst. Yeah, man. I was uh, oh, last year the first day the border opened, we were like totally isolated from from other provinces and the U S and everything. And they open the border. And the first day I was out fishing with my wife, she had a women's walleye tournament coming out. So we were just doing a little pre-fish, just fishing off a point with a cabin by it. And, uh, there was this freaking kid that's like a wake surfer or whatever. It was his first day back. He'd been swamping around in that big boat. I'm just like, whatever, like, you know, deal with it. And he thought we were filming him cause I was just filming her talk. Yeah. So he like hopped on his little sea do and came out and we were, she's got a 17 foot one, like a 2005, like pretty modest rig. Yeah. And he came out and like, it was the most arrogant breed I've ever seen in my life. He thought we were filming him. We thought we were paparazzi and he's just like a little 18 year old weasel. And he freaking <laughs> his final words were, I'm sorry, you can't afford a $300,000 wake surf boat. You peasants. <laughs> Wow. And, and cruised away. Wow. <laughs> yeah, man. Like a real up. nice guy. Yeah. yeah, that was the only uh week. He's pretty ballsy ever. to say that to you. You're a big boy. Well, he sped off. He sped oh, okay. off real quick. 
Uh, yeah, no, I looked at Ashley. I was like, that's the last time we're taking your damn boat. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> leave the shiny rig at home one day and call the freaking peasant by an 18 year old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure he's worked a lot for his $300,000 boat. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's, we got one of those guys, and you guys have 400 of them on the day. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're the worst. <laughs> Uh, I don't think they're doing it to be dicks. They just don't know any better. And it's funny, yeah. like, they used to yell at us for, like, plowing into, like, a no wake or something. Because it's, like, all channels and stuff around the lake. You know, they used to, like, yell at us if you're, like, got a wake too close to the dock. And now they're out there just, like, rolling six-footers, like, right into everybody's shore. Like, nobody says anything now. Is the is the water all freak high there? Uh, It's a little bit high, not super high. God. Just high enough to make the fishing fun? Like, are there any, like, bank? No, 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 no. No, not that cool at all. Yeah, not that cool at all. There's some lakes that are real high, but Tonka was real low, and now it's just kind of normal. They, they, they don't really let that place get too too crazy. It does have a little dam on it, so we'll rip it out of there. I know there's been a couple of years where it'll get real high, and they'll put the whole lake, no wake. The fishing's really good because then you got stuff in the water on the shore but it sucks getting anywhere. Like we've had tournaments out there where it's straight no wake. Yeah. Like you really got to like pick your zone and stay in it. You know what I mean? Cause normally we just run around fish at this bay, fish that bay, run to that lake, run to that lake. And it's like, it's going to take us like an hour and a half to get there. <laughs> like yeah. you gotta, you guys got to pick a zone and hang out, you know, that'd be a different dynamic. I don't feel like yeah. I'd like that. You probably yeah. couldn't handle that. It was tough. We had, I think we had like one year, we had like two or three tournaments in a row where they were all no wake. And of course, like I'm an idiot and still try to fish like all the way around the lake. And the guys that like yeah. stayed in the bay right by takeoff kicked the shit out of everyone because they like fished all day and we just like idled for like six hours. Yeah. Because you're like a go fast guy too. Hey? Oh, you yeah. You're standing well, up. You want the fastest boat. Yeah, well, I, you know, it's like I fish, it's like any, like, like your home, like, you know what I mean? You got so many, like, you know, we got like 50 spots we want to hit. You pull up, make 10 casts and go to the next one. And the no wake derby just really took its toll on that. Yeah. It's pretty rare. You, uh, you guys been back next week, huh? Or in a couple weeks. Oh, maybe a surprise. <laughs> I didn't mean to shock you there. I was asking if you're heading back next week or what's the what's the rotation oh, now? I haven't looked. I got Maddie and Patty coming into town Sunday. We're gonna bang on them around here for a few days. And like right after the fourth, I'm gonna take Maddie to a spot and try to teach him how to smallmouth fish a little bit more, and then we're gonna head to the St. Lawrence River. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you got the you got the proper bass and men assembled then. Yeah, yeah, it'll be a shit show next week. Be, yeah. uh, I'm sure Matt will 100% get hit by Pat when he's casting. It happens every time we go. He's a wild man in the boat, or what's yeah. the story? No, Pat's, Pat's a wild man, and then three in the boat's kind of tight, you know? Yeah, and like two years ago, he about knocked Matty out with one of them big chickens. Took a yeah, three quarter ounce of chicken right on the back of the head and like a hard throw, split yeah. him up and he's bleeding everywhere. Yeah, I think I saw a picture of that. I was like, "Oh, that's gross." And then the next picture was Maddie standing there in a soaking wet Hank Hill gitch, and I was like, "That's worse." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's ah, that sounds like fun. It's getting uh, it happened when they were like fire and we were like catching them every cast too. And I, like, I felt bad. Like I wanted to stop fishing. Like my conscience told me like to be a good person you should stop and like see if matt's okay but i just just kept sending it nice guys finish last man i guess i just they're they're like biting every cast you know i can not throw yeah. in there yeah pat was yeah, probably just be yeah. pat was probably to be happy on a natural lake instead of whatever kind of freaking sewer he's been fishing in all year <laughs> yeah <It's all laughs> i don't fishes. know what they're fishing gutters yeah, he's like just you know, running off from Chicago that fills into the ditches. Yeah, it looks like the bass there eat like diapers and needles. And yeah, he was, uh, 
I don't like. I think Lightner's gonna. Oh, what do you call him? Choder. Choder. Yeah, he's. Yeah. Refer to yeah. him as Choder and Choder only from now on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's. I got that. He. Uh, he said he was gonna come up in the fall. He wants to do the chicken hunting thing and uh, yeah. come come learn how to do some moping. So uh, see if you can line that up with him. But he might bring Renwick with him too. And I I think Renwick's gonna go on a little bit of a vision quest. I don't know how I it's gonna see look. That happen. Yeah. yeah, he he oh, might yeah. go hunting down Sam Squanch. I know he oh, wants yeah. <laughs> he wants a taste. There's a big swamp right by my house. That you probably got a lot of them up there too. Yeah, we had a great Sam Squatch country. I've heard I've heard some pretty creepy shit. Um, yeah. you know, one night frogging in the evening, and I like I was freaked out. I was like, that's obviously a Sam Squanch, and yeah. uh, it was like a frick, some kind of weird raccoon scream or something. I don't know. I brought that's a guy in there. Yeah, there's plenty of shit to freak you out though. Oh yeah, there's <laughs> definitely there's definitely squatches up there, no doubt. It is squash country. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, you'll have to get up, bud. Come yeah. to the uh, come to the surf and turf. Um, what, what's the deal on that? It's, it's like a limit of walleyes and a limit of grouse, and like total weight. Two walleye under eighteen inches. Okay. So you got to play the slots, like yeah. catch catch a bunch and get two beauties wherever they're fattest, and then three chickens. Your three okay. heaviest chickens. Oh yeah. So it's a big chicken way. I've never thrown them on the scale. They're like two buck pounds. and three quarter. Buck and one three quarter. quarter. Yeah, There's a lot a of disparity. Big. Like a first year one is like 1.1, 1. 1, okay. like a little short tail. Yeah. And then the you know, the big the big box that are in the middle of the road. Yeah. Uh like and, it's not, and dude, it's not sporting. Like there's they just are like, you know, yeah, it's, it's like a grouse sh- on. Yeah. Yeah, it's like shooting pumpkins. Yeah. Um but yeah, those those would be like a pound and three quarters. Okay. So, and then a perfect under walleye, like a perfect walleye under eighteen, is like two pounds. Okay. But a you know a, a seventeen inch is only a pound and a half. So. So you got like. Uh, you got eight nine pounds. You're solid. Yeah, yeah, eight and a half pounds usually does it. Gussie okay. wanted the first year to split up his team a little bit. Like you're not oh. allowed to send one guy chicken hunting and. Oh yeah. You know, there were some conversations around that. His uh, <laughs> the person he was with kind of dimed on him a couple of years later. Okay, Gus was yeah. out fishing. His buddy was out just hammering chickens. Uh, no, I think there was a couple teams in play. I don't know. Oh he wow! He didn't read the rules. I could parlay, huh? Yeah, and then wow. the, one of the guys he was with was like came and weighed in as his walleye and he had a line burner. I let it slide like, uh, you know, I was kissing 18 and yeah. he had this big story about how he, you know, went down to this dam and caught it. And I was like, okay. And it turns out he was just with Gussie. <laughs> 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 so but like you said, man, you can't turn it off. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, that sounds fun. Yeah. So are you guys doing, uh, I never did watch like the show or whatever that proper bass and thing. I don't know if it came oh, out or whatever. Yeah, fair enough. It all got taken down. It oh just, yeah, yeah. It's like it's too too wild. When you're hanging out with the boys, this is how we talk and how we act. But it's just like not for the public. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we get yeah. potential losing a couple sponsors over the deal, and it was like just a fun project where it's not like we we're making money on it, and then like potentially yeah. lose a lot of money on sponsors. So. Yeah, we yanked her. She's she's done. It's just yeah. I don't the know. risk first reward wasn't the, the real world's just apparently can't be put on the internet. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's not it, nothing happened in any different than I'm sure you and your buddies sitting around a campfire and going out fishing, hammering wallies and shooting chickens. Like I'm sure the exact same shit happened there. And then you put it on the internet, and it's like not okay. Yeah, it's it's a tough line to toe, hey. Yeah, it is. Because like I, you know, I I know you've been, you've had your peepee slapped on live probably a few times. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and and no one wants to hear like someone swearing every word if there's kids watching or whatever. I get that. Um, but at the same time, most of the most of the consumers in the are not you know they're not going out there and standing straight up and putting their gelled visor on and everything they're you know kind of going out with their buddies and messing around and i mean but 
but yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I see <laughs> you guys are, are towing the line and, and doing a damn good job of it. No, yeah, we tried. Yeah, bud. Yeah. Well, um, Gussie said to pick you on Wahi for the fantasy okay. fishing, fantasy fishing guys. I think Gus is a good pick there too. Yeah. Yeah. I picked him and he said, pick fighter. Yeah. Well, if we're in different buckets, pick us both. Yeah. I know. I know how to catch them there. Yeah. That's, that's about as close as it's ever going to get to you boys. Hey, yeah. It'll be well, relax. Well, we got lacrosse, but like I never fish there. So that one's that's- only like three hours from my house, but I never go there. Yeah. It's kind it's of hard. Weird. It's like, you know what I mean? Like we got so many good places to go fun fish. It's like, I mean, it's a decent fishery, but it, you're gonna drive by like twenty better places on your way there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So don't go there too much, but yeah, mm-hmm. no, why? Why would be real fun? Yeah, oh, it's lining up pretty good for you then. What? Yeah. Uh, what are you sitting in point? Uh, I'm like right at the classic cut. Like I'm just inside of it, so. Which is fine. I, I'm through all the shit tournaments, really. Unless something yeah. catastrophic happens, I should be fine. Three left, and I should, in theory, catch them at the next three, but you know how that shit goes. Yeah, well, if I were a gambling man, I'd be betting on you at least going to the Classic. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> be yeah. nice. Yeah, you that's the goal over here. There. Oh, yeah. You, got, you, got, uh, you definitely have nothing to prove. <laughs> yeah. Back up north now, I get to have fun. Yeah. Do you go hard on the on like the local derb thing at home? I know you guys jumped in on one. Uh no, not really. Like fish a few Wednesday nighters and stuff. I just honestly I like our Minnetonka's changed so much since I was out there all the time. Like I just show up and just get my ass beat. Like it's embarrassing. Like uh, like I'm just living on like ten year five, ten year old memories, you know, like where we used to crack. I'm like the lake used to have like a nice green stain to it and it was all milfoil. Then yeah. we got zebra mussels and they spray the hell out of the grass. So it's like gin clear and there's like all this coontail growing out in like twenty foot of water and that's where everybody's catching them. And like I'm just still going back to like rock piles that get beat to hell and like flipping patches that haven't had a four pounder in them and like <laughs> five years you know what i mean like yeah it's not like uh, taking a week off to go dial her in or yeah no i just show up and go fish memories and just get throttled by these little kids it's kind of funny but yeah they they must just love it though oh yeah i'm sure every time i show up they kick my ass they're telling every one of their buddies but yeah good for them yeah yeah you i mean these kids might be flexing on you for beating you a little bit but they should uh, be thanking it's good. you. Yeah, no, it's all good. Yeah, yeah they mind. should be it's thanking you for, for making them get up a little bit earlier and learn that lake a little bit better so they can uh, lay a, a Tuesday nighter on you. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll keep giving them my 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> any, uh, any like, heavy up-and-comers from Minnesota now to keep an eye um, on? Uh, well, Choder, I mean, yeah. I don't know if he's an up-and-comer, but I think he'll be fishing with us pretty soon. And yeah. then uh, right now there's this there's this little Parker kid that's winning everything on Tonka. Um, that was the guy I had. Oh, is that, it? Okay. Yeah, that, I crushed all his rods. Okay, that's not the kid that won last night, but he won the last two like big tournaments on Minnetonka. Yeah, but he's kicking everybody's ass. I could see him getting in the opens and giving it a go, but uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure there's more coming. I'm just not, I'm out of the scene. You know what I mean? I'm not fishing there all the time. So I'm yeah. sure there are some kids coming. They're going to be fishing the elite series someday, but uh, yeah. Yeah. I like it. I like the yeah. Northern guys. Oh, yeah. Like good crew from Wisconsin, bunch from Minnesota. It's yeah. going to be sweet when, uh, when Choder makes her in there. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what's he like, uh, <laughs> what's he like seven or eight years older than you? Uh, I don't even know. I think I'm should quit keeping track at some point. I think I'm 37. I don't know how old he is. He's got to yeah. be at least 40. I don't know if he's that much older than me. Yeah, okay. a few years, anyways. He was definitely he fishing. was like an influence when you were young, though. Hey, oh like, yeah, yeah. No, he's showed me a lot of shit, man. He showed me some a lot of yeah. a lot of cool shit. Yeah, yeah. He he seems pretty freaking knowledgeable. Yeah. 
yeah like i said earlier the, the grind he's got is pretty sweet like i stayed with him down south and uh i showed up into the house and like uh austin had this great big like king bed it was like half well, half, right. half the house and i was like yeah. okay I, and I, you know, no one was there and I walked in and then I looked over and the couch is just like covered in tackle and has like a sleeping bag on it. And then I walk into another room and there's like a couple beds in there. And, uh, Brad was just sleeping on the couch. Like he booked the house, rented it. Yeah. Uh, didn't, you know, didn't want a bed, didn't want a room. I was like, here, like, take this man. I'll sleep in the freaking dirt. Like I'm just, oh, a kid. Yeah. Yeah. and, uh, no, just like love, love just going to bed and surrounded in tackle and, freaking fish till dark and you know we're coming off at dark and the only guys you'd see were uh were choder and and the elite trucks and it's like all right this you know he freaking yeah. loves it i hope i uh, love it that much you know in a in a few years because uh no they don't go away yeah no i mean i bitch about stupid shit now like yeah really, i think that's really just part of like growing up yeah man. I, I just want everything yeah. Yeah, there's always something to bitch about, but uh, I wouldn't trade it for nothing. When it beats hammer and nails, that's for sure. Is that what you did before? A little bit, did that. And I, mean, I, I was doing that like when the housing boom was going, like 2008. Then yeah. that crashed off. And then I just, uh, after that, I did uh, maintenance at a big apartment. Uh, it was like a management company. They owned like four or five big apartment complexes. And I was basically like, on clogging drains and fixing sheetrock and shoveling sidewalks. That's basically all I did there. But it was cool. Like they'd let me work like 80 hours a week in the winter and then like leave for, you know, a week at a time, like lots of times during the summer to go fish opens or whatever. So it worked out perfect for me. Yeah, man. That's beauty. That yeah, was a good gig. Well, before I ask you a bunch of questions, you got to be somewhere. You got to like, I got, I've had yeah. you here for an no, hour. I got, I got nothing. Kay. I might have to take a break and get it run up and grab another beer, but that's about Kay. it. Let's do that. Okay. I'll see you back in a minute. All right. Got reloaded. Yeah. Nice one. Head up to the garage. You got a, you got a pretty sweet setup out there now. Uh, you got a nice, nice big garage or like taco room? No, or no, nothing too fancy. It's a regular garage. One day I'll have something nice. Yeah, yeah. Are you like living in town or are you out in? Yeah, no, I live in a cul de sac. Like a, the wife likes like, it, but like a suburb. Oh, yeah, yeah. You guys have it's different terrible. words than us a little bit. Yeah, no, it's like a housing development. Yeah, it's. It's a decent place, but I, I just want to eventually get a little piece of land and be able to piss off the front step and shoot guns in the backyard, you know? The whole city limits kind of cramps the style a little bit. Yeah. I mean, you can try that in city limits, but you're probably not coming north of the border to go grouse hunting if that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, that's cool, bud. It's, I mean, it's probably nice to be home and, um, you know, for a little bit. And I think we got to talk about life on the road. Yeah. Into that, oh, yeah. what's uh, oh, yeah. I'm a little bit out of touch. Uh, when Gussie was was kind of rooming with you guys a little more, we got, um, you know, we got I got to live vicariously through him and and yeah. got a lot of juice stories. And uh, you know, I met Grow uh, a couple of years ago, went fishing with him for a bit, and oh, that was really awesome. That was when the sleep jackers were were fully assembled. So. <laughs> Who, whatever the hell that means, that's a that's a stray cast thing, but it, it kind yeah. of stuck. So, what uh, what's the dynamic now? Like, who who are you staying with? Uh, it's me, Maddie, and the Johnstons now. Gussie's kind of big time in us. I don't think he likes when Shelbs is around all us idiots. So, uh, yeah, oh, that's probably fair to his own deal. Yeah, no, I probably wouldn't want my wife around them guys either, but. Uh, yeah, no, it's pretty fun. But Gussie was like the responsible one, you know what I mean? Like, he yeah. was on point on dinner and like had yeah. all the shit planned out. And now we're just like lost. You know, we get off the water at like nine o'clock. It's like, what are we going to do for dinner? It's like, well, I don't know, just a shit show. They're like eating dinner at like 10 o'clock at night and yeah, crashing and out. Yeah. Probably never getting a cleaning deposit back either. No, probably not. <laughs> definitely not 
<laughs> so yeah. you're still with the Johnstons. Yeah. You got Matt, Maddie in there, and this is a full time thing. This is every. Yeah, so far. I think we're yeah. right. I think we're staying with Gussie at the river. I think that's about it. Nice. You guys got like a house or something. He said he did. Yeah, he said, you know, some guy with a big house we're all going to stay at. So that'll be fun. Get the band back together. Yeah. Let Who books Gussie. them? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. Like, Chris Grohl was, like, real responsible, too. Like, he was on. Yeah. And he'd, like, did the season start. And he'd be like, did, 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 we got here, 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 and here. And now, like, staying with the Johnsons and Maddie, like, we're all real irresponsible and procrastinators. It's like five days before we leave for the tournament it's like where are we staying and they're like i think chris i know this sounds messed up but i think chris johnson's like the most responsible one out of all of us now and he's like lining up the houses like three days before we get there so (laughs) yeah it's been a bit of a shit show a lot of places have been like sold out or like we can't get in there till like the second day of practice kind of deal so we gotta stay at a hotel for like a couple nights and like move after practicing all day to the house it's yeah it's been a sharing, show. sharing well, one extension cord in the driveway yeah we'll, we'll grow up one of these days get responsible but whatever yeah do you think uh do you think there's guys that are less organized than you out there like on the tour i don't not many no i mean i, mean, I could see john cox being like that and that's probably about it yeah yeah. What do you like? It must it must drive those guys nuts, hey? To like, you guys just wheel into town like just the top four mobile. Yeah. Uh, just like you know, probably didn't look at a freaking map before the tournament. No, yeah. didn't. Uh, not a goddamn chance. There was pre practice. No, <laughs> that's a waste of time and money. And then, I mean, obviously, there's the odd time where it's not going to happen, but. Most of the time, you boys are all in the top 40, you know, or yeah. te- like teasing the check every time. Yeah, that's the only way I can roll. Like, if I did more, it'd probably hurt me. Like, I know there's guys that go and like pre practice everyone, and like, I'm sure they got all their tackle organized. My shit's just in Ziploc bags. Just sometimes it takes me like 10 minutes just to find a bag of worms, you know, but whatever. Uh, that's just yeah. how I live. I just, that's just my life. I can't. That's what works for me, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I've watched you enough to know that you're sneaky, um, really meticulous about your tackle. Like, I'm not going to, like, Maddie is the worst. Like, I, like if, I, if I throw a hook, no, it, the opposite. Like, if I throw a hook, my shit's a laser beam, you know what I mean? Like, my knot's good, my line's good. Like, Maddie's got this spooky throws all the time. And it's like, dude, just the rustiest rolled over hooks. Like, there's no way I could personally, like, ever land a bass on that bait he throws. It it literally has, like, three rusted trebles. Like, the hooks are all bent out on it. Like, just the shittiest hooks you've ever seen. It works for him. Yeah. But, like, you're, you know, you get real jacked up on your gear. Like, like your, your shit's tuned. Yeah, my tackle organization's a mess, but like I said, like, my hook's right. It's, like, everything's a system, you know what I mean? Like, I mess around a lot of stuff. I tweak a lot of hooks, just bend them up with the players, like, how I like them and stuff. Um, I just don't ever want to lose a fish, you know? Like, it's pretty rare my line's going to break or, like, I'm going to lose one because my hook's shitty, you know what I mean? Like, I might just never be around the fish because I didn't find them in practice, but... I'm not going to, like, lose one because I'm throwing a stupid hook or something, you know. Does Maddie ever do that? No, he throws like, rusted treble hooks. No, I mean, like, does, they're bent. Does, he lose, does he lose a bunch of them because of it? You I know? don't Not really, no. He doesn't really seem like a fish loser. No. Mind you, he's using mono, so, like, <laughs> them hooks get in there, and that's just where they live now. <laughs> yeah. He, <laughs> says, he said the real. rust makes him, like, stick better. <laughs> Got a little grip on there, you know. It works for him, you know. Whatever works for you works for you. I just I can't live like that. But uh, yeah, well, that's Maddie. Like you should see his boxes. Like they're just 
you know, like them clear planos after they've had like a bunch of rusty shit in them, like the whole box just kind of turns like reddish orange, you know? Yeah, like, that's like what all works. Yeah, that's what all his tackle looks like. That's nice stuff. Yeah, it works. But he, I think he's been tightening up a little bit because there's like three, four times in the last year where he doesn't have a hook file. He'll like give me a jig head or something and make me like sharpen his hook before the tournament. So I think he's tightening up a little bit. Yeah. Nice. Well, I mean, yeah. like right when you say it, uh, you know, you're a dying breed. Here comes, here comes Matt. Well, <laughs> so uh, they're still out there. Yeah, there's a few. He's taking her to the next level, though. I mean, oh, yeah. he's out of control. <laughs> well, he's freaking fun to watch. Oh, he yeah. takes a lot of heat off you, too. You're no oh, longer yeah. the, oh, no, you're not the guy they're scared to put on live anymore. No, I got nothing to worry about anymore. <laughs> he, he, uh, he made it easy for me. Yeah. I remember watching him on, uh, they had a, an open on Cherokee a couple of years ago that he won. Yeah. I was supposed to go there, but like there's COVID and you couldn't cross the border. So I yeah. watched like the whole damn thing. It was like a shitty weekend here in the fall. So I just tuned her in and like, yeah, if you would have had one of those little fish clickers, you'd be like, you know, on like 30, 30 yeah. F-bombs probably. Yeah, it was yeah. pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie Moore's trying to cover his tracks after every one and justify it. <laughs> Just like, okay, fighter had like maybe one smoke once and, and one F-bomb or yeah. whatever. <laughs> like uh, is... He just blows it out of the water. <laughs> He's setting records, man. Yeah, yeah. Most fines for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We don't care. Dude. You guys are making bass fishing cooler. Yeah. And and you're making it so everyone else doesn't have to be a little bitch. Yeah. You know, like so squeaky clean. Whether you see it or not, like, you know, and, and you talk to companies now and they, they, you know, they're not telling you to go swear on live. Um, but it's kind of like, you know, give it that like a soft sell, more authentic, you know, cut it to it straight. Not this, like this tennis player, gel haired, yeah. visor wearing patch pirate that that you know has kind of been taken over this game so i mean there's a reason everyone likes you guys <laughs> we'll say that um the hell else we got drinking beers <laughs> hanging out yeah yeah sweet ready for the st lawrence you gonna tie up some fluff you tie your own still or do you fight or fly eh, no you gotta tie your own but i hate it like I'll tie two and I'm like, oh, I'm good for a while, you know, like one practice one, one derby one. Like I need to sit down and just tie like 20 of them, but I, I hate it. Like you can't just grab like a hundred fighter flies and I mean, they're decent, but I just like, I like tying my own. Like I do a couple little things to them and it makes no difference at all. Cause I've like, you know, you like on those days where you crush them and your shit's just torn to hell and there's like, it's like the most pathetic looking jig on planet earth and they still bite it. So it probably yeah. doesn't matter, but like, yeah, like we him. call that thing the Dave Bennett. That yeah. is, do you know him? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah so I'm at Bennett at Sturgeon Bay. He's good shit. Yeah. So if you got a leader, a floral leader shorter than one foot, that's a Bennett <laughs> leader. <laughs> and if you've got a hair jig with less than three strands, that's a Bennett jig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that fucker will catch him on it too oh yeah you will like yeah. at, at one you know i've seen his hair jigs before where he may as well just be throwing the piece of filler on a jig yeah like just, there's no he's hair real on a lead head in yeah he's just freaking fishy he was actually yeah. our, our like our second guest on here just because he's so like he throws out the biggest tournament bombs you've ever seen and then i'll just like crush everyone the next yeah. weekend just for uh, doing like off the wall, wild shit, and just being fishy. Like yeah. you could sh- go shut his graphs off; it ain't gonna matter to him. Yeah, no, they don't care. <laughs> uh, he's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, I need I need some smeltinators. Can you? You? I heard you're the guy to talk to about that. Yeah, I need some for uh, some upcoming tournaments. We're not, we're all sold out at Omnia. Are they? Yeah. Oh. I don't know why that guy didn't send me an email. I'll, uh, I was actually just thinking about him today. Uh, yeah. 
We need yeah, some more down there. We got a bunch for him now. Speaking of, of Omnia, um, I was talking to Jacob a little while ago, getting him some jigs. And uh, yeah. I think it was Pete in the background asked, he's like, is that Jamie? Ask him if he's fishing KBI. And oh, yeah. I, <laughs> I'm like, well, it's the biggest team tournament in North America and the takeoff's 400 yards from my dock, and all I think about is bass fishing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You'll be there? <laughs> I'll be there, but apparently yeah, he's okay. coming up. He uh, he said he was thinking about coming up. and I Yeah, he said he wanted to. I don't know who he's going to fish with. but Yeah. You, maybe? No, nah, it ain't going to be me. Yeah? No. Nah. Yeah. You got to get your shit figured out for I end up in Canada. <laughs> Yeah, need a, a little bit of paperwork, eh? Yeah. Yeah, maybe for chicken season, you can come up with uh, the Sasquatch Hunter, the Choder, and yeah, we whoever should. the hell else hops on, uh, hops well, on that bandwagon. How long does it take to catch two 18-inch walleyes? Uh, like five minutes? Yeah, if you got a good spot. Okay, yeah. It can take you all day, too. You could not get them. You could get chickens that weigh more than the walleyes. That's where I'm at. Like, I got to just put the first two under 18 in the box, and then I'm going chicken hunting the rest of the day. Well, here's the deal. And we keep coming back to the surf and turf derby, but I'm getting fired up on it now. I'm um, excited, too. A sharp tail grouse is a big bitch. Really? Those yeah. count? You got yeah. many of those around? Enough that no one's weighed one in, but we see them all the time. They're a couple hours north. Really? So you're okay. allowed to you're allowed to take off whenever you want in the morning. You just have to be back by five, and everyone's oh, always that's the play, huh? Run yeah. two hours, go get you some big chickens. Yeah, some sharpies. You got to shoot them on the wing, like they'd be more up your alley. I know you like waterfowling a lot, and oh, don't would. get me wrong, I will dust a chicken right in the middle of a gravel road, no problem. You, you'll never see a, a sharp tail in the middle of a gravel road, though. No, no, they're that's weary, right. man. Yeah. Was yeah, it get more so, prairie north of you? Yeah. Yeah. Like Does they get it? in those, well, not prairie, but they get in those like logging cuts. Okay. You'll kick them up and they'll fly like, you know, a couple hundred yards. And yeah, I mean, we're just a bunch of bubba's up here driving around, listening to counting crows and <laughs> waiting for uh, yeah. our limit to show up on the road. So you don't uh, usually don't chase them that far, but that's, uh, if you want to go hard at the Derby, that's, that's that could be the play. All right. Because you're yeah, the only good guy. Info. Yeah, you're the only guy from Minnesota that doesn't walleye fish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My gig. Yeah. I'll eat. I'll eat them, but yeah, that's about as far as I go. Yeah. You got enough harvesters around you, anyway. Oh yeah. <laughs> Not hard to find them. No. No. Well, All sweet man. It's cut up. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, I got. I got to ask. Like, right. how'd you end up coming on the show? I like saw why Gussie posted a thing on Instagram, said he was on your show. I said, fuck, I want to be on there. Sweet. Yeah. I like that. Because yeah. you must get hit up like crazy by all these, like, there's every freaking pass well, yeah, out uh, there with a GoPro yeah. and a microphone. But they're all junk. It's like they got three people that watch it and two of them's their parents. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> and you can never tell they're like oh, i'm so-and-so with so-and-so podcast i'm like oh, okay and then you go on there and you're like what's your favorite color spinner bait <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god <laughs> really oh man uh, after like uh, I, I knew your show would be good like i like doing pats this is fun because we always bullshit about yeah. some stupid shit you know what i mean but yeah like, the favorite what's your favorite like like i yeah. don't know Oh God! Yeah, yeah, all that Tell dumb shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They like, a lot of them sound more like a job interview. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, after Gussie won that Tennessee River one, he like he won't say no to anyone. He's too freaking nice. Yeah, so, I don't either. But I like I wanted to be on here. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, we were. He was like, you know, we were partying with him in the garage. It was just kind of his first night back, like selling a little. And he's like, "I got to do this podcast." Like, Shut the hell up. We're like, okay. So he's off in the corner. I'm like, "What's the name of this thing?" And, you know, he's talking to this guy, and the guy's asking him like, 
what kind of fluorocarbon? Is it 10 pound? Like you're setting, you know, what kind of rod are you using? Is a seven one? And just like the brutal, like interview pamphlet questions. And, yeah. uh, I pulled this guy up and there were, he had 11 views on his last podcast and it was with Edwin Evers. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so he's obviously got just like a banger of an intro or I don't know <laughs> what he had on the go, but he had him roped in. Uh, uh. So I, I looked over, I was just like, hang up. <laughs> well. he, he didn't finish the interview, but yeah, that's sweet, man. Um, you know, the crew, the crew that listens to this is going to be fired up. Uh, oh, yeah. it was awesome to have you. I mean, yeah. like we followed you for so long. I feel like kind of, you know, no, no real surprises felt like I knew you already. Like I said, you're, uh, you're genuine and that's, that's why we all like watching you and best of luck of the next ones, man. Yeah. Hopefully we'll, hopefully we'll see you again soon. Yeah. Appreciate it. Well, hell I got Maddie at my house next week. We'll just can crank one out of the, crank one of these out while he's up here. Yeah, put his dumb put his dumb ass on there. Yeah, could do that. It'll be fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this spread's looking pretty sweet. Is Renwick uh, gonna be there. Yeah, well, I'll be here. Yeah, he told me yeah. he'd jump on. So yeah, I know he's doing his show Wednesday night from here. So maybe Tuesday night we'll drink some beers Tuesday. and talk some shit. Okay, man. List is uh, my fighter list is Smeltinators and Tuesday night and. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you can if you're uh, if you're an army of diehards, they're gonna have a bunch of smeltinators soon because I'm gonna send some down yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, we need and them. Uh, btfishing.com get you some smeltinators. Either way, it's gonna be the juice and uh, oh, yeah. sweet bud. Looking forward to talking to the hair band next week. Oh yeah, let's do it. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thanks again. All right, yeah, uh, thanks for having me on. Yeah, talk to you in a few days, bud. All right, see you, bud. Take care, man. See you. Bye.